Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nog. Welcome back to episode number two of my Minecraft Bedrock Let's Play. Is it a Let's Play? I don't know. But episode two of our Minecraft Bedrock Adventure. And since the last episode, a lot has happened. And I'm not joking, a lot has really happened. So much so, it's kind of hard to keep up with what is happening. The boys have been kind of going off and doing their own thing. And yeah, just basically taking charge of everything here on the server, which is absolutely crazy. What is this though? What is all this cobblestone? You can fit past the fence post. Before the... oh, okay, so there's been some comments that the guys have been getting say, a little bit annoyed with creepers because creepers are apparently always on the other side of my nether portal. So it looks like they've taken the liberty of coming over here and almost making it relatively safe by not allowing creepers to come through. But let's just uh, show you what's been going on at the base not a lot has been going on i created this though which was an automatic sheep farm uh wool farm and we've just got some brown and white wool going over here just using a observer dispenser with some shears in it of course nothing too serious or complicated going in there but if we head over into the uh, nether next now this is where a lot of things has happened. So it all kind of starts over here in the nether and me and Muffin were out one day exploring and Muffin was having a pretty hard time and he died some 700 blocks away from the base so I was trying to make my way back and we stumbled across this which is the nether fortress we've been using this for blaze rods and things and that has opened up the opportunity to do some brewing which i've been doing quite a lot of to be honest with the blaze rods and bits and pieces and i have to say it's been very helpful because once again i will comment that bedrock mobs and combat is a lot more intense than java I think the reason for that though is mainly because Java has the cooldown mechanic on the combat whereas Bedrock you kind of spam and uh, it doesn't matter about cooling down but having the potions now and the fire resistance definitely makes the Never Fortress uh, a lot easier because the mobs spawn in such quantities. The blazes are constantly bombarding you so fire resistance potions for me are a must in Never Fortresses on Bedrock. And now, I should probably take that tip over into Jara as well, because although I don't find Java fortresses too difficult, obviously taking out that blaze equation is always a good thing. I didn't notice on the way back through, but uh, clearly the creeper did do a lot of damage, blown half my nice little looking tunnel up here. But going the other way, we'll come back to that in a minute, but uh, down here we have linked up rocket space now to the nether tunnel system, so we can go directly to rocket space for quick access but in this other direction obviously now having blaze rods enabled the boys to create some eyes of ender and they went ahead and they found the stronghold and they defeated the ender dragon so we have full access now to the end and we've managed to get one elytra between us which muffin is holding on to right now but we've all got some shulk boxes i don't think the guys have actually explored the stronghold too much though so there's probably some loot and things hiding itself in the stronghold we do have a record and some maps of bits and pieces but yeah again linked up to the never tunnel system the end portal is here and we can go through there at any point we like to Head on in some end cities, do some end city raiding for some shulkers and some more elytras. Did I say elytras before? Elytras, elytras. Who really knows? Tomato, tomato. Now, just to go back to the Never Fortress, as I said before, I'd been spending quite a bit of time in the Never Fortress grinding away and I managed to get myself three wither schools. And I'd like to say quite a lot easier than I did in my Java playthrough. And I spawned a wither and... I decided that I was going to take the same strategy as I did when I took on the Wither in my Java world. Now, I wasn't aware that in Bedrock, the Wither had some different mechanics, shall we say. And I'm going to show you now the ending of that fight and what it left. And yeah, let's just say I've got a massive new cave. Many thanks to the Wither.
Holy cow, that was something. So I thought I could tackle the wither. And turns out on bedrock, it has a whole different attack than it has on um, Java. And I wasn't expecting that. And ah, I've probably died about 30 times, maybe, doing that. That's how crazy that has been. But finally, it is dead. Now I just need to go and claim my... With a star. All right, so I'm expecting a lot of mobs down here. I'm not gonna lie. So the first thing I need to do is really get this place lit up. Before anything. Thank you. I want that nether star. Thank you. Man, this place is absolutely destroyed. This was my mine. Holy cow. So this bit down here is actually where we started this wither thigh all the way down here. I remember bringing it all the way down and actually tried to escape up here. And this is like the first area we died in when we was actually doing the wither fight just in here. But it's just absolutely crazy when you think of like how lethal this wither was on bedrock. And I've done quite a bit of research into the differences between Java and Bedrock and it turns out that the Wither has double health on Bedrock and it also has that extra like charging attack which didn't feature in the Java edition but man oh man have we got ourselves like a nice little area now a nice little destroyed area and a monument here to forever remember this first wither fight on this uh, realm on this server we had rocket and muffin at one point i i died after about dying 20 times i said i need to take a break from and they tried to step in and they kind of got wrecked as well so i kind of thanks to them for trying to help i know they weren't able to in the end but yeah so we'll come down here at some point soon and we will um tidy out all of this area and collect all these ores and these diamonds and bits and pieces but for the time being at the moment we have ourselves a with star and we can um it means we can build ourselves a beacon i'll be completely honest i still can't quite believe how much damage this wither did in here and it's definitely a lesson learned that i don't want to take on a wither like that so I have actually pulled down a copy of this world and I've been playing around and I've put a lot of hours into trying to find an easy way. Now I know in Java you can trap the wither under the end portal and you can kind of suffocate it and I was hoping to do the same in Bedrock and then I read somewhere that it actually wasn't possible but I went into a testing world and I did manage to trap it using a similar sort of mechanic and I said, okay, well, if I can do it in this testing world, let's try and do it in the realm. So I made a copy of the world and pulled it down to machine. And I've spent hours upon hours upon hours, like copying, rinsing, repeating, and doing all this sort of thing to try and find the absolute sweet spot for trapping the wither. I, I don't know why it's so different in some worlds. It just seems very dependent. What I have come to realize though with a bit of research is that it seems like the wither has to go in or be facing a certain direction to be the most effective so um, you take in an empty locator map into the end and you have to actually point it in a or be facing a westerly direction i believe it is and then what i've done in mine is or in my trial sorry i haven't actually set it up in this world yet but I've actually set my like spawning platform a little bit off center. So the middle of the end portal is actually coordinate zero zero. Where I am actually spawning the wither is something like three zero or negative three zero, one of those two. But it's three off the center. And that seems to be the sweet spot. So as the wither spawns, it kind of moves into the center and then gets trapped under the portal. And I'll be honest, there's quite a bit of damage going on around the portal when it goes off, but it seems to work and trap the wither, which is definitely going to help because the boys kind of try to help me and as, as much as I thank them for trying to help me defeat that wither, I think it was a bit OP for them. So I think as and when they get wither schools, they're going to want an easier way to fight the wither, which will definitely help them along. Anywho, I'm going to take some of these materials I have gathered here 
and I'm actually going to head over to spawn because I've got an idea for a community build. And what I want to build is kind of like a post office, I guess, because it's become apparent that we are actually sharing quite a lot of resources and leaving each other gifts. So I kind of thought it would be nice to build some sort of central location where everybody can come and just leave stuff for other players. So I'm going to grab some resources and head over to spawn and we will be back momentarily. All right, so we're over here at spawn and I've not actually seen this. This is the fountain with the egg, it seems, from the end. So yeah, something I haven't seen and somebody's raided the community sugarcane farm here and not actually replaced anything. So we're going to actually look for a place to place this kind of post office. I haven't really planned this out too much. So let's just see what happens, shall we? So this is the simple redstone circuit here. And what this will do is this will just activate the lamp when something gets put in the chest like so. So the person will know that they have something in their post box. And this is just a simple circuit I made in my java testing world and i've just ported it over uh to this one so now we just need to build up uh, it's a box for everybody let's just make sure everybody's lights are working yep mine is working muffins is working finally rockets is working fantastic and we just got some stone and some and a site here and we'll just sort of bury things up a little bit maybe around here we could have some form of wood I kind of feel that up a bit should be forwards one something like that perhaps all right, so we've put this wood bracing kind of all the way around this and it kind of does give it a bit of depth, but I want to do something else and I think I can make some dark oak track doors. Now, I don't know if we've got any dark oak or spruce even might work for this. So make like an awning out of trap doors that come out. But in time, I just kind of want to take out some of these blocks here and replace them with some andesite just putting cobble between like the andesite like that often um it's like a nice change a nice change from smooth to really kind of like a rough so let's just take out some areas so what do we do so i don't want to go don't go too crazy I'm still kind of getting my head around how in, how to texture and make things look a little less generic. If I had some vines, I would make some mossy bricks and things, and that would add a kind of like a nice little detail. I'm wondering now here, maybe add some detail, maybe some like upside down plank, uh, not upside down, but some like edge planks here, maybe all the way around. Yeah, like so. All right, so that should be enough of the planks. So let's get them in here. Enough, sorry, not planks. That should be enough of the logs. And now I wonder if I... Change a few of these, like so. Subtle difference, but... It's something. And then I think the finishing touch would probably be some lanterns, but I don't have any on me at the moment, so we'll just have to be torches. All right, let me go get some lanterns from my base. That was a little scary. All right, so I've put some lanterns in place here and I've also decided I'm gonna 
give the boys some gifts here. So let's put these out nicely for them. So there we go. That's got some care packages for the boys. I'm sure they'll appreciate some diamonds and some bits and pieces that I'm kind of in surplus of at the minute. But yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much going to be it for today. Now, I know this episode is probably a little bit disjointed and a little bit shorter than you'd probably expect, but because so much has happened and I've not been around to like record it and be a part of it, I kind of just wanted to bring everybody up to speed with what has been going on on this server. And I think a lot of the episodes may actually be like this. While the boys are off doing bits and pieces, I'll just come in later and do a quick update video and do some bits on camera while I am here. So. Let me know down below, guys, if that seems like a good idea, if you want to see more, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, I will see what I can do. But thank you very much for tuning in to episode number two. We'll be back with another one really soon. But until then, thank you very much. I've been Oki. You've been awesome. Bye.